Cambridge International School. I hope this video finds you well and you are ready for that three week break. It certainly is a time to reflect on how great this year has been, hasn't it? I've been so impressed with 2020. In fact, I don't think I need to add any more. Not that fast though. Well, this year has been no way normal. We know that much. COVID was not normal. Yee-haw to the vaccine. Trump was not normal. Yee-haw, Biden. Distance learning was not normal. Yee-haw, students coming back. We have survived and become stronger because of what life sends our way. So let's reflect a little bit on the year so far. We arrived at a new campus and entered a building that we found well wanted and we are turning it into a palace. DOSIB reviewed our distance learning provision and rated us as the high, in the highest category for provision. Our well-being has had its interim review from the WAS award and we are well on the way to reaching this award within 12 months rather than the normal 18 months. Our SEND department was also recently reviewed by KHDA and we came out with flying colours. The inspectors were impressed with the school's teams and their efficiency, ethics and purpose. Our academic results from last year continues to show growth. The value we add to the students' outcomes in BTEC, GCSEs, AS and A level, we have not only reached their expected grade on average, but exceeded it by one full grade. Finally, our parent surveys are now closed and for the first time ever, we have tripled our net motor school. That question that simply asks, would you recommend us to another parent? Moving from five to 15, the highest we have ever been in four years. And that's only turn one. And we still have eight months to go of school. So that eight, eight, next eight months, what will that look like? Parents, they were given the opportunity to reconsider the position of choosing distance learning or face-to-face. -face. We began with a survey to parents and staff regarding their option for face-to-face -face or distance learning. Now, as a result, the large majority of parents, over 50%, opted for face-to-face -face learning. Therefore, taking this number into account, to comply with the DHA and safety regulations, we had to review the educational provision on offer. We just can't have you all 1,300 of you back here 100% of the time. We can only fit 700 max at a time and still keep social distancing. So then again, we sought your opinion of you, the parents, through a second survey, requesting your preference for either one day face-to-face -face and one day distance learning, or one week face-to-face -face and one week distance learning. Now we do appreciate this is a hard time for parents, and it is for the rest of the world. As a school, we have unlimited choices based on the rules and regulations of DHA, MOE, KGA and UAE government. We present you the choices and give you, the CIS community, the option to be part of that decision, which you have done and you have spoken. The results of the survey and the KGA approval saw the majority of parents staff opting for one day face-to-face -face and one day distance learning with alternate days. Therefore, the decision made by parents is that the school will offer this mode of delivery for term two. We are informing you now to provide you some time over the winter break to make the unnecessary arrangements regarding childcare, transport to and from school, ensuring that your child is ready to resume their learning in 21. Now, please note, in our provision, siblings will be attending school on the same day, frontline workers, teachers, police, medical personnel and students of determination will be given the option of being at school every day. Now, our distance learners will not be affected by it and will continue to access their daily lessons from home. Now, there'll be more details coming out about this soon. Again, we do appreciate this will be difficult for some parents, and as, as it is for the rest of the world. However, as a school, we are limited in the choices based on the rules and regulations of DHA, MOE, KHDA, and the UAE government to keep you safe. We present you the choices and give you, the CIS community, the option to be part of that decision, which you have done and you have spoken. Now, for our segment, you asked, we answered. 
Have there been any new health and safety protocols in place? Actually, no, not really. But during these times, health and safety for the students and staff and parents, along with wellbeing, is high priority for us. At school, our health and safety standards are on high alert all the time. There is constant cleaning, constant sanitizing, and constant reminders of social distancing. The school is safe. Our biggest weakness, our biggest risk, our biggest exposure is parents. Parents who send their children to school are not well. We had two incidents recently where parents sent their children to school even though they were waiting for a PCR test. This makes me all oh, so angry that some of our parents put our children at risk. Transmission comes from home, not school. Community transmission is the risk. We ask you again to help us keep our school whole school safe, in particular as large groups gather over the break. Now always be aware that we will protect all our students and will send any student home that presents with even a cold. It is one of the symptoms of COVID. Headache, sore throat, coughing, congestion, runny nose, and then we log, track, and trace and request if needed a PCR or a doctor's report before any student returns to school. Just don't send them in the first set if they're not well. Okay, so the next question. Do the new school fees affect me? Now, I've mentioned this in previous correspondence. It does not affect existing students. Existing students remain on the old structure, except for the normal government in create incomes, ECIs, what the school needs up the So if you are starting the FS, you will stay on the old fee structure all the way through. Now, James decided to do this to offer existing parents for their loyalty and did not feel it would be fair to introduce new fees during their child's journey through school. And by the way, the capacity has not increased. It is exactly the same as we had at the E. Now, the last question. How do you make sure staff are the best they can be? Now, this is our quality assurance, and there is not one thing we do. There are many, so let's have a look at some of them. We have book books. We go and check the students' books, and we tell the teachers whether they're writing appropriate and giving the children appropriate feedback. We then talk to the teacher, we give them feedback and we give them targets. We then do lesson observations, organised without notice, organised with notice, with SMT, with parents, with external agencies, with feedback to staff, we set the targets, and then we go again. We have walkthroughs and drop-ins, arm and outs. We have professional development plans for every single staff member, and it's monitored and checked every term. We give them feedback, we set them targets, and then we do it again. We have coordinated professional development for all staff, whole group, individual, external, and internal. We also have a teacher support program for teachers that we believe that need that further support. But we also support teachers at the top end to push them a little bit further. We then have a GEMS internal reviews where other principals come to school, to our school, and have a look at it. We also have moderation meetings to make sure that staff are marking the same across all grades and subjects. And then we have a four day external and internal reviews from DSIB and GEMS. This list is not all we do. However, the majority of the systems we put in place is to improve the quality of teaching and learning for staff. And, and if we find that staff, after all this, are unable to reach our standards, then yes, we suggest that GEMS may be not be a place for them. Now tell me a profession that does all this to an individual every week, every term, every year, and then expect them to create highly engaging, highly exciting, highly focused energy lessons. Every lesson, five lessons a day, five days a week. And then give essential feedback on all those 25 lessons with 30 students in each lesson. That's over 700 pieces of work to provide feedback every week. Now I'm sure you can see the load our teachers are working under every week, every day, every lesson. I just want you to think about that for a minute. And finally, all staff are qualified, otherwise the government would not allow them to teach, nor would GEMS. All have BEVs, all have a BA in their specialism. Now at CIS, we have 149 teaching degrees, we have 132 bachelor's degrees, we have 51 master's degrees, and over 2,000 years of teaching experience 
between us. It's not bad. So we work hard. Now please understand that the educational system and the school will never be more than the teachers within it. And the greater the appreciation you give it to the teachers, the far more enlightened and culturally advanced the society will be. Teachers, you are the heroes. So finally, let's please stop expecting normal from our kids and teachers. Teaching in this pandemic is not sustainable like it is. Education has been turned upside down and there are some fantastic new ways of delivering education that have come out of it, no doubt. However, there has been some awful side effects with deaths and well-being of staff, students and parents still having an unknown impact. However, we as educators are never satisfied with the status quo and we will continue to provide the best education we can for our students academically, socially, and emotionally. So finally, at this point, please take some time to spend with your family and breathe a little. Once again, I leave you. We would like to wish you and your family a restful break and that the holiday brings all that you have done. So for now, be safe, be generous, be forgiving.